Hey there, welcome to the Science Hutch. I'm Hutch and let's work on making some sweet motion graphs with Logger Pro software. All right, so here we go. We're gonna make a graph that looks like this. You got this basketball shot going, la 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 la, like that. And let's see how to get these sweet graphs. We got a position of, a, a vertical position graph here. We move along the graph. We can see the, the dots moving in the video. And then we've got down here, We've got a, um, a vertical velocity graph. We've got this little box here that's giving us the equation for that best fit line. Um, how can we create all of this? So let's go. Let's do this together. And away we go. I'm just going to do new. I'm just going to start from scratch. Don't even save it. Bam. This is what Logger Pro looks like when you first open it up. Now, how are you going to get that movie in here? You want to go up to the top and hit insert. Boom. Graph. No, 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 no. Yes, movie. We want that. Click it. Now, if you have installed your Logger Pro 3 software, then you also have a Logger Pro folder in your computer now. Mine is in library application support, and it's down here in Logger Pro. Find that folder. My Logger Pro automatically finds it and opens it like this. I have experiments already in there. I did not have to put them there. And now I'm just going to look down through these experiments and I'm gonna find sample movies. Hooray, movies already ready to go. So I'm gonna look down here, air resistance, ball toss, basketball shot is the one we're working with today. This is gonna give us a two dimensional movie of two-dimensional projectile this guy shooting this basketball the first thing you want to do is click up here in the gray get that hand move your movie around and we're gonna click on the bottom right hand corner here and slide this out to get the movie as big as possible I actually like to click the this green barrel and then full screen logger pro you can see how you're gonna get a little bit more size out of your video there on your screen now I'm going to look at the bottom right hand corner. There's these three red dots and a uh, right arrow. Click that. That's going to pop out your menu to use here in Logger Pro. Now we're going to go through these buttons. This first button is just gives you an arrow to select things. There's nothing to select yet. So we're going to click on this next arrow, this red dot. That gives me this reticle, this little cross symbol here. And that's going to allow me to place dots on this basketball while it moves around. I'm not ready to do that yet, though. I want to finish the buttons. So the next button down is going to give me an axis. If I click anywhere, you see these yellow axes popping up. I'm going to leave them alone for now, but I'm going to use them to set my origin point and to set horizontal and vertical on this graph. And the fourth one down is the last one we're going to need today. This one, this horizontal ruler, allows me to scale this video. If you're using this video, in the video, when the video was done, on the bottom here of the basketball court, this white looking line is actually two meter sticks that they laid on the floor of the basketball court so we could scale this video right now. Wasn't that so nice of them? So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the left hand side, just click and then hold and you can see you're getting this green line, hold and then drag it over to the other side of the meter sticks, let go and this pops up, scale. Enter the distance in units that correspond with the distance in the movie. This is two meter sticks so the distance should be two. I'm going to type in a two there and I have units of meters for meter sticks. Hit OK. Now everything is nicely scaled. Now we're ready to start putting dots and this is going to make a graph behind it. If I click on this, here's my graph ready to go. Nothing on it because no dots yet. So click back to here and let's go to the bottom. Move your slider along. We want to find the acceleration of gravity on planet Earth. This video was done on planet Earth, and this ball's obeying the law of gravity by going up and coming back down. So let's find the ball when it's no longer being touched by this guy. That's a good spot to start. And we're going to just follow it as it's in free fall while it's going up and coming back down, freely falling. I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to get my origin and I'm going to click there. That gets my origin right at the start, this first place that I'm going to start tracking the ball. And then I'm going to get my, my point maker here, and I'm going to start selecting the exact same place on the basketball every, every single um, frame. Now, 
I want to use the bottom of the basketball, and as I'm clicking here, I'm just going to tell you why. Because if you look at the bottom of the basketball, it has, it's shaded, it's got a shadow, so it makes a lot of contrast with the background. And that's really helpful for making sure I get the exact same spot on the ball. Also notice, while I am plotting these points, it is automatically advancing the video by one frame for me with every click. That means that I don't have to go down and advance the frames. It's doing it for me. I'm just clicking and making these blue dots. I also like to move the reticle out of the way in between frames and reposition it so that I make sure I'm getting exactly on the bottom of the ball. If I don't move it, my reticle is kind of in my way as I try to move down to the next spot. Now watch as gravity is accelerating this ball and the ball's getting a faster and faster vertical velocity. You're going to see these dots are spreading out and that's going to make it nicer because we're not going to have to place as many dots the further along we go. I'm going to finish placing dots just before the ball hits the floor because once it hits the floor we got a whole bunch of other stuff going on so I'm going to stop right there that's going to be really nice now if I use two fingers on my uh, my MacBook Pro um, trackpad I can actually slide my two fingers up and down and advance this video that's what I'm doing right now and it makes the dots for me it shows the dots if your dots aren't showing that's just because over here on the right this three dot button is not selected and if you select it you can see them if you unselect it you can't see them also once I'm done selecting making the dots I do not want to leave my dot selector or creator selected I want to go back to this thing because if I accidentally click that will make a dot now what if that happened what if I click and that made a dot oh no I made a, a bad dot well actually it's already it's already got my dots for these points in time but let's go to here and then I accidentally click and I put ah weird and then look what happened my graph back here my graph responds and it put it that random dot here look at this graph it's so nice and then I put that dot what the heck so go back to here and if you accidentally make a dot find it click this little arrow to select stuff click your tip of the arrow on it boop boop and you get this little baby circle around it and then you can hit delete and I hit the delete button on my keyboard and it's gone and now my graph is woo, nicely scaled beautiful again what are we going to do with these graphs now that we've made them um, let's get to click on the bottom corner move this little guy up here make him small and out of the way and click on this graph and then let's going to do this bottom left corner move this up and I actually want two graphs. I don't want to show two things on one graph like this is doing. I want to show two graphs with one thing on each. So how am I going to do that? So now I have this graph selected. You can tell because I have this line around the box. And I'm going to hit Command C and then click down here in the open blue area and Command V and I get another graph. So I'm just copying and pasting in the normal way you can copy and paste with stuff. And then I'm going to click on the Y axis, and it's going to change what's, what it's showing. If I hit X, it's showing horizontal position in meters. This is where the ball was at every moment in time along the X axis there. I don't want that. I want to look at the vertical motion. So I'm going to hit Y, and I'm going to see the vertical position of the ball. And then I'm going to go down here, and I want to see the vertical speed or the vertical velocity of the ball. And there we go. There's the velocity. It looks very different because we are graphing a different thing. What we see here is that the velocity started moving upward with this value and then it, as we move along the velocity hits zero there and then it becomes negative as the ball's moving down. So all of this motion is the downward motion of the ball and all of this motion is the upward motion of the ball. The reason why it's constantly sloping down is because of Earth's gravity. What goes up must come down and this is Earth's gravity constantly working on that velocity to change it to become negative and bring it back down. Now these graphs are intimately linked so if I have these sliders so that the two graphs are the same size I can actually hit this button up here this little button that says got Got the, it says examine when you hover over it. It's got a red dot placed over a blue curvy line. I'm going to click that. And now what this allows me to do with the graph that I've selected, watch what's happening with the video while I move along the graph. Ooh, I'm examining each point and it's showing me the value, the Y velocity there with the timestamp. And if I go right to this point, that's where my velocity is pretty much zero. And it's also at the top of the flight of the ball. So what goes up must come down, and at the top it stop, 
so that it can turn around. And we got this little rhyme. So what goes up must come down. And at the tops, it stops so it can turn around. And there it comes down. But it didn't stop completely moving. It just stopped rising and falling. This is just its y velocity. Its horizontal velocity is constantly forward while it is constantly changing vertically. Now, why is it changing? Because of gravity. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to click here. I'm going to drag and get this nice selection of a nice, uh, nice uh, straight line diagonal bit of data here. And I want to get a best fit line of this because if I can get the slope of this, that'll show me how my velocity is changing. And that change is caused by the Earth's gravity. Go up to the top here and select this button. Linear fit when you hover over it, ooh, and then boom, automatically it's giving me this box. I'm going to click this box. I'm going to move it out of the way of my beautiful data so it's not covering that up. I also don't, I don't like this. I want, I want my data. Ooh, there it is. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. And look at this. Look at this. Vy equals mt plus b. Now, that is y equals mx plus b in math class. In physics class, what's on the y-axis? It is y velocity. V for velocity, that Y is a label showing that is a Y type velocity, a vertical velocity. M is the slope, and T is what's graphed on the x-axis for, for time. And then B is the Y-intercept. Now, what's the Y-intercept in this case? It's in meters per second. This is the velocity of the ball upward when it left this guy's hands. It is how fast the guy pushed the ball exactly up if we ignore his forward push of it, right when it left his hands. And then the slope is in meters per second every second. It's showing how these meters per second changed every second the ball was in the air. This is the influence of gravity. It is why what went up came back down. And it is how quickly what went up came back down. It's how quickly gravity was able to bring this ball to stop it rising at that moment right there and bring it back down to the planet. Now, physicists have accepted this value and measured and measured and measured this value. And at, on Earth, on our planet, the value in most places is 9.81. This value is 9.74 meters per second change every second, or we would say meters per second squared. How good is that value? Is that value good enough? Well, what my people will do in my physics classes is they will have to do 9.81 as the accepted value, and then they'll use this value, this 9.74 or whatever they get on the slope of their best fit line, as the measured value. And then if you look up percent error equations online, you'll see, okay, how to do percent error. And let's see if I can, let, hmm, 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 let's see, go online and let's go find um, percent error equation. Boom. Okay, what's a percent error equation? Here, let's get some images for this. And uh, this one's looking pretty good. All right, so let's click this one. And this looks nice. All right, so, oh, it just went really white. But um, let's go with this one. No high contrast. All right, percent error is the absolute value, that's what these signs are, of the theoretical value minus the experimental value divided by the theoretical value times 100 to get percent. Theoretical value can also be the actual, the known, or the true value. Now, in this case, theoretically, the acceleration of gravity here on our planet is 9.81 meters per second squared. So that's what we're going to put in for theoretical here and here, 9.81 meters per second squared. The experimental value is what I got or what you get as the slope of that velocity graph. So that is going to be, where's my Ulaga Pro? Here it is. That's going to be 9.74 meters per second squared. You'll put that into your uh, percent error equation and hopefully you'll get less than 10% error. That makes it acceptable in my class. Good luck with that, everybody. Now you know how to use Logger Pro. You know how to get some beautiful, beautiful graphs, and you know how to do percent error uh, calculation with it. I hope that helps you, and have fun with your physicsing, and we will see you in class. Bye-bye now.